If you've never seen a clip from this game before, please forgive me for what I'm about to show you. You look yummy. Wanna taste my venom? Do you have a banana butter pie? This is Super Fighter M. And if lines like this didn't already clue you in, Where is God when you need him? Nintendo did not make this game. Super Fighter M was a mobile gacha action RPG released in the fall of 2019 exclusively on the Google Play Store. It started gaining infamy in the West after the game was localized in English the following year. A post on Twitter from @hantani featuring a few gameplay clips went viral, eventually leading to the game being covered by people like Donkey, numerous online gaming publications, and uh, one z -list YouTube channel. The strangeness of Super Fighter M is almost almost immediately noticeable. The bad voice acting, clumsy English translation, and blatant copyright infringement is juxtaposed with an unusual level of polish and effort for what is a game that was, inherently, destined to be met with a terrible fate. So what is Super Fighter M? Why is the game so polished? And if the developers were going to bother to put so much effort into the release, why did they slap Nintendo characters on it, dooming the game to end up in the mass grave of Nintendo copyright infringement along with numerous fan projects and Bowser penis art? Cracking the mystery that is Super Fighter M proved to be difficult right off the bat. The game was pulled off the Google Play Store in March of 2021, which honestly the fact that it managed to avoid Doug Bowser's copyright sense for 6 months is kind of an amazing feat in and of itself. You can still find the APK online and play it using an Android emulator, but I had mixed results on that. On Nox, the game just froze at the loading screen. Starting up the game on Bluestacks leads to this prompt where it asks to have access to your phone in storage. Yeah, big f nope there. And ends up crashing no matter what I select. So, all the game's footage in this video is taken from other sources. I'll leave links to all of them in the description. From a gameplay perspective, Super Fighter M really isn't anything out of the ordinary when it comes to this genre. Some vigorous tapping for your normal attacks, you gain abilities, and use the in-game currency to get that dopamine rush and find a brief moment of happiness in what is otherwise an existence filled with existential dread and suffering. Of course, what makes the game stand out is the blatant, comical, and frankly surreal way Super Fighter M steals content and how the developers have interpreted these characters. The thing that shocks me, and most people when they first see it, is how the game clearly has effort put into it. There's custom animations, a ton of voice acting, and cutscenes. The Mario series lore seems to be accurate for the most part. If you just showed me this without context, I'd probably think it was an official game. Well, until this part. Oh, my baby chain jump! At the same time, there's a weird amount of laziness. It sounds like all the voice acting was done by two actors, some of the cutscenes are just straight up pulled from other Nintendo games, and the game's localization... Here comes Goombas of Koopa Troop! Yeah, it ain't great. Super Fighter M was created in China. In a lot of ways, it actually isn't all that remarkable as far as these bootleg mobile games go. The game itself may be unofficial, but China has one of the largest mobile game markets on the planet, and there is some serious cash to be made there. For a mobile game to stand out, it has to be polished. Anyone remember that Chinese Pokemon game that actually featured better animations than Sword and Shield? Well, not like that would have been particularly challenging in the first place. There are tons, and I mean tons, of these mobile games on the market. While I'd wager that a lot of the people behind these games don't have any malintent, there is some concern about devs and publishers releasing low effort cash grabs, banking on generating user interest just from featuring well known IP. A lot of these games are stuffed with ads, microtransactions, and at their worst, even contain malware. Just like that Chinese Pokemon game that featured better animations than Sword and Shield. Although China's copyright laws are actually pretty similar to other countries like the United States, copyright isn't enforced nearly as aggressively. As a consequence, games like this become an attractive option for mobile game devs who are looking to make a quick profit. It isn't out of the ordinary for devs to create a game engine, then churn out a bunch of quote unquote different games with copyrighted characters paste over it. Many of these don't receive English localization to avoid drawing attention. The boost from having recognizable IP is sometimes enough for the developers or publishers to make back their money before the game gets pulled off whatever app store it's on. But who made Super Fighter M? Well, to start, let's take a look at its Google Play Store page. You can enjoy yourself in the adventure or battle with players come from all over the world. 
Yeah, with Bowsette in this game, I'm sure players all over the world were enjoying themselves. As far as whoever made the game, well, that's a bit of a tricky situation. The game's developer is listed as xpetgame2020 at gmai.com, and the game's publisher, Cayman Games, is basically a ghost on the internet. The only thing that comes up when I searched it are just more stories about Super Fighter M, which, in all likelihood, means that Cayman Games is a shell company made to keep the publishers out of legal trouble. Super Fighter M does have an English Facebook page, though no real information is given about who runs it. Posts are made by someone who clearly doesn't speak fluent English and largely consists of messages about server maintenance. As of the recording of this video, the last post on the page Page is on March 8th, 2021, confirming that the game has been pulled off the Google Play Store. We regret to inform you that we have to terminate the operation of Mario. Hey, you guys can't steal Nintendo's characters and their marketing strategies. Now, I did wonder about shooting this page a private message, but any hope that I would get some kind of solid answer out of whoever runs it was dashed when I stumbled upon a review of Super Fighter M from a Medium post by Landon Kidwell. Kidwell reached out to Cayman Games through the Super Fighter M Facebook page, leading to some odd responses. Whoever Kidwell was chatting with seemed pretty apprehensive about giving away too much information about the making of the game, which is understandable when you consider the legal gray area Cayman Games is operating in. However, one piece of information I did find is that the game's official name is this. Googling that leads to a website which is dedicated to sharing mobile games mostly consisting of unofficial Chinese releases containing various different popular game IPs. The name of the game given here is Super Mario Civilization Adventure. My guess is the Mario was dropped out of the English release to help avoid the Nintendo Ninjas. But this page also drops an important piece to the mystery, the game's developer. Unfortunately, a Google search of that company doesn't really lead to any meaningful answers about Super Fighter M, but I did find a blog by at Hantani, the person who sort of started the game's viral emergence in the West. Hantani was able to track down a bit more information, finding a listing for the company that revealed that they started in 2019, only a few months before Super Fighter M's Chinese release. A website is given for the company, but it just leads to this, and because it's an image, I can't use Google Translate on it. But uh, something tells me they don't own the rights to Captain America either. The rest of the listing doesn't offer much in the way of information, basically just stating that the company is involved with the development and sales of computer technology. Given how close it was created to Super Fighter M's release, in all likelihood, this is also a shell company. Han Tani, who is a game developer themselves and has knowledge about the industry, also goes on to say that the game's polish likely means Super Fighter M was created by a well-known mobile game studio with considerable means, and that the game was presumably a wholly original project at some point, and then tossed on the Nintendo assets in the hope of seeing a larger return. Now, it may seem easy to dismiss that idea at first. Why would an established company need to steal from Nintendo? Well, there actually is a history of that. Enter NetEase Games, one of the biggest gaming companies in China. In 2019, NetEase Games made more revenue from game sales than Square Enix, Konami, and Nintendo themselves. They came under fire in 2018 for their mobile game Operation Wind Cloud Island because, well, yeah, it's fucking Breath of the Wild. And then there's Tencent, literally one of the biggest companies in the entire world, whose video game revenue in 2019 dwarfed Microsoft, Sony, Apple, and Google. As of the recording of this video, four out of the five games with the largest player base in the world have been published by Tencent. They fully own a few game development studios like Riot Games and have stake in companies like Epic, Ubisoft, and Activision Blizzard. Tencent even partnered with Nintendo to release the Switch in China, and in 2019 they released a blatant Pokemon Go ripoff. And yeah, neither of those examples are as overtly infringing as Super Fighter M, but it just goes to show that some of these companies aren't above ripping off other games if it means they can bring in a bigger profit, no matter how big or successful they already are. Now, there is still another core part of the Super Fighter M mystery, and that's this fucking thing. The game's icon features a character that isn't seen anywhere during actual gameplay. The first thought I had was that this thing was some kind of placeholder to keep Nintendo off Super Fighter M's scent, but reading through Hantani's blog got me thinking. What if this is a remnant of whatever Super Fighter M used to be? A little nod from the dev team to show off what was once a wholly original game. Surprisingly, there's actually some noteworthy evidence to back this up. 
And that brings us back to where this whole thing started, Super Fighter M's Google Play Store page, where, surprisingly, a huge chunk of this mystery was right there for all of us to see. An image clearly shows the icon character in-game. Presumably, he was our original Mario. There's also another screenshot that shows him fighting some kind of pirate enemy. Now, the game makes a whole lot more sense. It's so polished because Super Fighter M was a legitimate, original game at some point. While the details of the game's transformation will likely never be made known to the public, there's a bit of a story we could piece together. Super Fighter M, given its polish, likely had significant upfront costs. At some point, the game's publisher or developer probably got nervous about getting a return on their investment and made the choice to swap out their original characters for Mario. There's still a few things about the game that concern me. Unless Super Fighter M really wants to hear the weekly robocall I get about renewing the warranty on the car I don't have, I can't think of a good reason as to why it needs access to my phone. That being said, I can't help but find myself feeling bad for all the programmers, designers, and artists who worked on Super Fighter M before it became what it is. All that remains are these few images, perhaps left up as a small protest from the devs, the only remnant of what their vision used to be. All that hard work down the drain, probably because some middle manager overhauled the project at the last minute. But without that change, we would have never gotten call this. Me Birdo, but call me Birdie. And you know what? I think it's worth Kululu. I don't Actually, never mind. But I think we would have been better off without that.